Aw, oh, baby girls. What y'all doing in there? We're gonna talk about you guys in the video today. You want to? <laughs> Let's talk about you. You don't go back up to your roost. It's time to get down and play for the day. All right, guys, welcome back, Revere Urban Homestead. It is Sunday, February 5th. It's about 11 o'clock, 73 degrees out right now and sunny. It is supposed to rain in a little while, so we're gonna knock out a video on raising backyard chickens in an urban setting. It's a fun video, full of information, so let's get to work and quit flocking around. <laughs> that was corny, let's do it. All right, so let's answer the first question. Why do we want to raise chickens in our backyard? Everyone will have different scenarios for this, different opinions. I have been doing it for about 12 plus years now in my yard. Um, I built this coop about the same time, 12, 13 years ago. So it's been very good. Now I raise my backyard chickens for eggs, obviously. Also I raise them to eat a lot of our food that we would normally throw out they will eat it they will compost it for me they do a lot of my composting and they give me manure for the garden plus if you're like me i raise them from babies a couple days old so by the time they're adults they're used to me and they're like pets i like having them around my younger childhood was out in the country, a little town of 300 people. We had tons of chickens and horses and pigs. So I still like doing it. I enjoy it. So let's start with the coop, the chicken run, their environment. Okay, so as far as the coop, guys, this can go so many different ways. There are so many different variations of doing it. You can do mobile coops where it kind of gets moved around in the yard throughout the year. Um, mine's a permanent stationary coop. When I first built my coop, it actually, where it's cut off, it ran all the way back to here. It was two pallets wide or long. But over the years, I realized I don't need that much coop space for the max chickens I usually have is seven at the max. So I don't need that much coop space. So what I did is I literally just cut my coop in half, added a piece of wood to it, and that's it. So this is my coop now. And like I said, well, this has always been my coop. This is the only coop I've ever made. So initially, when I first built this, I had the plywood going across the roof. And then I put that black like tar paper down for shingles, but I never got around to shingling it. So throughout the years, the water gets in that wood and it messes it up pretty good. So what I did is I added the uh, white corrugated plastic just for a nice waterproof for the roof so it ain't leaking in there. But coops don't have to be fancy, man. The chickens are not going to worry about it as long as they have a protected area safe from predators at night. And also where they can go in weird weather, windy weather, rainy weather. As long as it's waterproof, it's all good. So my windows that I made, obviously I have the chicken wire on them. So nothing can get to them. I have some outdoor siding that I put on, painted it red. But it's a very simple concept. The inner part of this coop is made out of pallets. I put pallets together and then I covered over them with the outside paneling inside my coop my coop does have a floor on it and it's raised a little in case it rains a lot and it gets flooded i didn't want to get in flooded inside the coop so it does have a raised wooden floor it's got some roosts that they can go on normally the three that i have now they all sleep up by the window they love that window area and as you can see i got a little girl in here trying to make a nest but i have to fill it back up with straw which we're going to do today but anyway, the coop, as you can tell, is all nice and secure, all right? I just ran two by fours across, put the plywood on top of it, and I have more brackets there for another roost in case I get, or for when I get more chickens. I have two nesting boxes in here, which sometimes they use, but for the most part, all of my chickens just lay on the ground because I fill it so full of straw they could just make nests wherever they want. 
I also have another big window there. So you want that ventilation. And this plastic is all beat up now because it's been on there for years. But I get that thick plastic and I just staple it to the windows when I need to get the cold weather out. Get that wind out of there. I just put the plastic on there. During hurricanes, I just screw in wood and cover them up completely. Let me get that plastic out of there. I just ripped off. Thank you. Yeah, I don't need that plastic. And then I have this door for at night. I just bolt it down at the bottom there. Turn that nail there so nothing can get in. And that's it. Open it up in the morning. And then they can roam around. So this has been a very good coop. And I just built it just kind of, I don't know, making it up as I go along. So the only thought you want to put into it is you want to make sure it's vented. See, like I have those top vents up there and I have hardware cloth on it. So rodents and stuff can't get in. See the hardware cloth? But that's a nice vent. So even if I block off the windows, like say for a hurricane, they, they will still have vented areas in the roof so you know you can get some fresh air in here what are you all yipping about I know I'm getting all this cleaned out and we're putting new straw in a little while I'm just explaining your house one question uh, is uh, oh how much room do they need well I mean for standard breeds they say about four square foot per per coop size so what a two by two section and um, outside they say about eight square foot per chicken the big heavier breeds they double that they say eight square foot in the coop and 16 I think square foot outside either way I've had up to seven chickens in this coop and it's about probably three by six something like that and again I did make it smaller because it went back further and it got steeper as you go to where you could barely get in the back corner without crawling I got sick of cleaning that so anyway there's my coop let's start now with the chicken run now the chicken run this is where they stay when I'm at work when we're not at home they have a fenced in area with a covered canopy up top so no birds of prey can come in at, during the day when we're not here. Nothing like that. They're completely sealed off. Let's go to the outside and look in. Okay, so there is the chain link. I can't remember what this is. I think it's like 7 foot wide by 12 foot long. Something like that. But all that is is a dog run that I bought at Lowe's after I built the coop. I was like, how am I going to fence it in? I went to Lowe's, they had this 7x12 dog run kit, and then the sunscreen you could buy separately right next to it. That was 13 years ago, so I kind of hope they still have this set up because I need a new sunscreen, but we'll talk about that later. So that's their run, that's where they stay when we are not home. Very simple, I just put it together like the instructions said, and it just so happened that it fit perfectly under the rise of my roof in the coop. That was not planned, but it worked out great. And that's been a very good run. Now, you could stop right there, guys, and there it is. There's your setup. You know what I mean? But I gave them extra room. And so here's their other outdoor area over here. I put a little gate there, and then I just ran the green fence post down and put some of the bigger hardware cloth or fencing panels, I guess you can call it. You know, this stuff here, that material. Just made a big old fence. And so the way they get out there is through here. Follow me, we go into the fence here. I just cut out some of the chain link fence, slip some wood there and boom. Now they can come out into the main run this is their big outdoor run when they when we're home so they have plenty of room plenty of room big old space they love coming out here 
and what I do is I put the wild bird feeder up here which is awesome because the wild birds come and they knock off feed and then these little girls get a treat throughout the day when the birds come. I have a little water bird bath over there that I fill up with water which I haven't done yet but I will here in a minute and that's it. This is their big area. This is huge for them. One more thing I want to point out that I built inside of the run that the chickens stay in all day when we're at work is I made this area here. It's a brooder kind of scenario. This is for the baby chicks. When we get baby chicks, you can't put them in with the big girls right away. They'll, pop, they'll kill them. So what I do is I raise my babies in here. And the only thing I have to do to adapt it to that is take off the two by four risers. There's one, two, three. Take off this panel of plywood, and then I make a new panel of plywood right here, put some hinges on it, and so that'll be totally sealed. I have hardware cloth all the way around it, all the way around it, and there is wood at the bottom just to protect the bottom. So nothing can really dig under too much. And that's where the babies will live, and they'll be able to interact with the big girls without getting beat up. They get used to each other, and by the time they get old enough, what I'll do is I'll open this up, and the babies start jumping up onto here, and then little by little they start coming down. At night I lock them up in there so the predators don't come, but I don't have babies right now, so I just put a waterer in there, and the chickens go in there and drink water. But as soon as the uh, babies start coming into like tractor supply, I am going to get another couple of them because we only have three and they're getting a little older. So that is my daycare for the babies, my brooder, my, my, my playpen, I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> That's where the babies grow up before they come out with the bigger girls. The system I do with these babies in here with the big ones but not able to interact it really reduces the stress of getting chased around by the big girls when they're too small. At least in here, the big girls will be all around that place looking at them, looking at them, but they can't get to them. So the stress level is a lot better and you just incorporate the flock better when you do it this way. So I would definitely recommend having a little brooder or a little playpen, whatever you want to call it, that you could seal up at night when you get new babies to introduce. Okay, let's talk about another question. Oh, chickens smell. I don't want them to be smelling up the area and the neighborhood and all that. That's gross. Well, the truth is, chickens can smell if you don't handle your coop and run correctly. Like I said, I've been raising chickens for 13 years about. I don't have no smells at all anymore. When I first started, I did. And the reason I did is because I didn't deep litter method. You have to deep litter method with these chickens so you don't get the smell. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's one thing I did that you don't do when you get chickens. I've learned the hard way because I've had to figure it out myself. So I didn't ever put anything down in the run. So the chickens are in here all day, they're pooping. They're eating any kind of grass that was here. It's all gone, as you can see. That's what chickens do. They'll till all day long. So once they till it up, then walk on it, then it gets all packed down, and they're pooping. Then the rainy season comes, and you just get puddles of swampy, nasty-smelling manure with tons of flies, uncontrollable. Oh, my God. When I first started raising chickens back here, I was nervous I was going to get called on because I had so many flies and it stunk. But just doing some research, I found the best way to combat that is deep litter method and composting in the run. So what I do, especially in the summertime, right now we haven't really had to mow any because it's kind of winter here, I guess you can call it, cool season. So I don't get as much uh, bagged clippings yet. But what I do in here is tons of grass clippings, tons of leaves when they fall in the fall, and also compressed bales of straw that I buy at Tractor Supply. And I just load this thing up, and the chickens dig it in, and they poop in here. I'm also putting food scraps and all kinds of stuff in here, so they get a lot of vegetation and different 
organic matter to absorb the moisture of the rains. And if we look here, let's just go right here. You see how loose that is, right? It's beautiful. Once this summer comes, I start adding more grass clippings and straw. We're gonna add straw today, but leaves and grass clippings and all that, it's just gonna become another big composting area with no smell at all. So yeah, Tractor Supply carries these compressed bales of straw. I'm so glad that Tractor Supply opened up about a year ago next to me. Well, down the road a little ways, but very convenient. So I use this to load up the coop. Okay, so the first thing I do with the coop, and I only do this like once every four or five months, I pull out any bedding that's left and I throw it right into the run and then I add new straw. That's it, that's all I do to the coop. So let me just get out the old bedding first. All right, there we go. So now I got all the straw out, all the old straw. And if you look at the door entrance, I have this little lip. It's about probably four inches tall. And that allows me to really pack in a lot of straw. So let me get the straw in there and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so as you can see, I fill it up deep. And now, of course, the chickens just love it. Oh yeah, smells great, smells like straw. They'll make their own nests in here, but it is definitely full all the way under there. In the nesting boxes, got new straw. And that's it. Now in the run, I threw all that old stuff in here, so all that old stuff has manure from when they roost at night, feathers, all kinds of stuff. Stick it in here, they'll dig it in, and again, we compost in here. I take some of that darkness and I throw it in my compost bins and let it compost down more, and then put it in the garden. So it all works as one little ecosystem around here. But I am going to add more straw to this, being I don't have no leaves or grass clippings. And I still got a little left here. Hi, big doggy. You just sitting there watching me work? Man, you like the rest of the family. <laughs> all right, let me add some more of this straw. All right, and I'm telling you the truth. That's all you have to do, guys, in order to keep the smell down. Deep litter method add a bunch of matter straw leaves grass clippings pile it in there the more the merrier that'll help absorb the water when it does rain it'll absorb the scent as they dig around with the poop and stuff in there it all gets mixed in it starts composting it's a beautiful thing so the next thing we're going to talk about is equipment what you need to raise chickens in the backyard things of that nature let's uh let's get into it they were so excited playing with the new straw. Now they're all just chilling back there. They throw sand into their feathers and have dust baths. And that helps them to keep mites or any kind of little insects out of their feathers. They throw that sand or the dust or the dirt, whatever you want to call it, in between their feathers and shake around. Just pretty much rub everything out. Okay, so once you got your coop and your run all set up, man, you're pretty much good to go. As far as equipment, I use these for the babies. They're little feeders. There's metal ones you can get, plastic ones. I prefer the plastic. Little waterers for the babies when they're small. These go into that little playpen area, the, the uh, rookery. Hey, that's a good word for it. You can get bigger feeders. There's all kinds of feeders. There's platform feeders where the chicken steps on a 
uh, platform and the lid opens, they eat and then they get off it and it closes. Those are pretty good. It's supposed to help with rodent control. Um, all different size waterers, but mainly you want your clean water area and you want your feed that you can lock up at night so the rodents don't get to it. Let me show you my feeders. So my feeders I made out of PVC pipe, the big extra large width. I have a cap at this end. I fill this whole tube up and then I open it up during the day and at night I put that cap right there so this is totally sealed up. So all the rodents can really eat is whatever fell on the ground. So that's, the, uh, that's my feeder that I made. I did a video of it quite a while ago, I can't remember, but I may try and link it in the description below. One thing I do have to do that I have not done, well actually I did do it on that, I did seal that. You gotta make sure you silicone those creases or else you do get water in there. But besides that, it's a nice sealed unit. As far as waterers go, again, there's metal ones or galvanized. There's plastic ones. There's all different sizes. I bought these two five-gallon ones. I really like them. They're very hardy. They fill up from up here. There's this little cap that you take off here, and you put it down right here where that's going. So you lock that off. Open this up, fill it all the way up, man. You got five gallons of water just cruising. And they're pretty easy to clean, which I got to do today. So that's what I use. A five gallon there. And a five gallon there. I have one feeder here. And I have another feeder over there, which I haven't been using because, again, I only have three chickens at the moment. Once my flock gets up to the seven again, I'll probably start feeding from there and there yeah so as far as equipment goes to raise a little backyard flock really no equipment necessary guys i mean some feeders some waterers your coop and your run are your most important things that you really want to be predator proof um but the feeders are there's so many different variations you can do whatever you want on that it's very easy and that stuff is cheap so that's no excuse Okay, let's address another statement or question. I don't have time to be messing with backyard chickens, right? It's going to take a lot of time to do. I don't have a lot of time. I work full time, yada, yada, yada. To be truthful, guys, once you get the system in place, there ain't much to do. Like right now, I'm going to clean out the waterers, which I do maybe every two weeks. I will actually use a sponge and scrub them out. Normally I just hose them out really hard with the jet and dump them and refill them. But today I'm going to clean them. So let's go back into the run. These waters are pretty easy to clean. I like them. Okay, so you figure about once a month, I scrub these out really good. Besides that, I just hose them out and dump them. So, it took me five minutes to clean it. I got one more to clean. And that one, I don't know if you can notice, but that one there doesn't get near as much algae in it as the other one. So that one's even easier to clean. That one over there is exposed to that straight sun coming through that area. So it gets a lot more algae. Anyway, let me get the other waterer done and we will move on to the next thing. Yeah, so the actual chores that are needed to be done all the time for this system, very minimal, guys. I technically just finished my chores and it was quite a bit because I had to do the coop. I don't change the coop bedding out for about every five, six months. Waterers, once a month, they get actually sponge cleaned, but besides that, just filled up and they're loving it. Okay, so what about daily duties for the chickens? Well, I get up at 5.50 every morning to go to work. So let me just walk you through my morning routine with the chickens, and then when I get home from work, what I have to do. This is an everyday thing you gotta do, all right? So 
Let's check it out. Let's see how demanding it is. First thing I do is come out every single morning with a romaine heart. Every single morning, they get him seven days a week. They get a romaine heart right when I get up. Obviously, they wouldn't be out right now. They would still be locked in the coop, but throw the romaine heart down. All right, chore one done. Okay, I'm just reenacting what we do in the mornings, baby. Next thing, bright and early in the morning when I am in here, I drop the romaine, I undo that, I pull this open, and voila. I open the door, they're normally up there, and now they start jumping down like, all right, it's time to start the day. That's chore number two, open the door. Chore number three for me every morning, uncap the feeder. I put the feed thing up here because throughout the day they'll be digging around and you will lose them. They will bury them. Then I come down and just shake the tube a little to let some of that feed run down. I do have to still fill this up for the week. I haven't done it yet. I come into the feed box next. I grab my little scooper. Grab some scratch, which we'll talk about food here in a minute. And I give that a whirl. And I also grab a little bit of their regular feed. Even though they have it in the container down there, I still like to give them just a shot of it. Give them something to do. And that's it, guys. That would be my morning routine every morning when I'm out here at about 6 in the morning. So now you know exactly what I do every single morning. And even on the weekends, I get up about 7.30 just because I know they're locked in the coop. So... That's my morning routine, just that easy. I mean, truthfully, it can't be any easier than that. Throw them a romaine, open the door, shake the feed, give them a little scratch grain, go to work, done for the day. So now, let me show you after work, the sun's going down, what do I need to do at night? Here we go, very easy. So by now, the chickens would be already in the coop roosting. They automatically go inside, guys. When it gets evening time, they go inside. It's time for bed. So what I do is when they're inside, I take this, my board. I cover up their door right there, which I'm not going to do that because it's still daytime. Then I come in here. I count. One, two, three. You're all in. Okay. Close the door, lock the bottom latch, put the cap on the feeder, and that's it. Walk out of here and lock it. Now everything is secured. The trap door is locked. This is locked. Their door is locked. I have left it open before for all of you who have been around for a while. I've lost quite a few chickens to predators. so. Raccoons will get in here. Um, so you got to be diligent on it or else you will lose them. All right, let me open this back up. Sorry. Actually, let me put some feed in there for you. One thing I left out is I do grab the wild bird feeder and put it in the feed storage bin as well. I forgot to mention the first thing I do when I get home from work is I open the trap door so they can come out in this main run and then I fill up their bird bath water over here. You gotta rinse it out with the jet first. Another question you always get asked, aren't they noisy? Well, I don't know, with this whole video going on today, have you heard them any? Look, when they're younger, they do get noisy when they lay eggs. They sing their egg song, they're all going off at once. But that's during the day. And it only lasts for a little while, half hour maybe, and that's it. Your neighbor's dog will be barking all damn day if they don't let him in sometimes, right? So, you know, the chickens, very minimal when it comes to making noise. So no, they're not that noisy. Another thing, do you have to have a rooster to have chickens lay eggs? No. Female hens lay eggs. They naturally have their egg laying process. They lay eggs like on a 24 hour cycle. They may skip a day or so here and there, but for the most part, the younger healthy chickens will lay eggs every day. 
And of course, how do I know if I can have chickens where I live? Well, you got to check your city ordinances. Mine just say no fowl at large. Doesn't say anything about you can't. I've been doing it for 13 years or so, so haven't had an issue. So low on the noise. Certain breeds could be a little bit noisier than others. I prefer sex links, barred rocks, buff Orphingtons, and these leghorns are pretty good. These are my first white ones I've had. So yeah, those are the kind that I prefer. They seem to do really well in the backyard. All right, let's get into what I feed them. What can they eat? All that good stuff. Let's start at the feed storage bin I'm sitting on right now. Okay, so I've been using this like Rubbermaid storage bin for quite a few years. The rodents have eaten into the bottom of it so they can get in on occasion. I set rat traps back there. So you might want to just explore your options on what bin you want to use. Maybe a metal one or something like that. But regardless, this is my bin. I have... I use organic layer crumbles. Obviously you gotta wait till the hens are laying eggs before you give them layer crumbles. Before that you give them chick food, starter food. So this is just organic egg layer crumbles. I don't use any of the medicated kind or none of that. I prefer just the organic stuff. So that is what goes into their big feeding tube that they have access to all day long is the organic egg layer crumbles. This is the organic scratch, different grains and stuff. This, they get one of these every day in the morning. I throw it in there and they get to rummage around for it, okay? And then they get their one romaine lettuce every day. But chickens, man, they eat anything, basically. We give them leftover pasta, we give them the ends of breads, we give them any salad stuff. It's more or less what you don't feed them. We don't feed them any kind of strong taste, like onions. We don't feed them any onions, no citrus, nothing acidic like that. No dairy, no cheese or nothing like that. They do get pieces of steak, they get leftover meat. Chickens are omnivores. I know everyone, the big crave is vet, what is it, uh, vegetarian fed chicken eggs and stuff. I don't know, when these guys catch a lizard or something, you're gonna see a baby dinosaur eating. They're like dinos, man. They like meat and they love when I give them steak. They love pasta, they love lettuces, bread. You don't give them a lot of it, but they, they love it. And I even buy these little packaged, this one is the Fly Fiesta, but you can get the mealworms. Take a look at those mealworm larvae, fly larvae, whatever it is. And now, and now look at the chickens already. They see what I have. <laughs> All right, let's go over here. I'll show you an example. Want some fly larvae? I'll go to the pet store and buy the live mealworms and man, they will tear them up. So chickens eat everything, man. Everything except strong smells. And the things that we do feed them, like when I feed them leftover steak or leftover pasta, even mac and cheese, I rinse off all of the seasonings and all the cheese from the macaroni and cheese. They get just the macaroni noodles or they get just a steak with no like seasoning on top. So I take off all the seasoning. But man, they save us a lot in throwing out food stuff. What I don't feed them, I put right in the compost. But they eat everything, I mean, they'll eat all kinds of stuff. There's still some more down there, why are you right there? Go get it. There's more. But yeah, different chickens are like different things. We, in the summertime, when it gets hot, we cut off half of a watermelon. We'll leave it in the fridge, get it nice and cold, cut a watermelon in half and put it out here. By the end of the day, it'll just be a bowl <laughs> because they eat everything. They'll stick their beaks in that watermelon so fast. They love watermelon and they love bread. Here, let me go grab a piece of bread. We even give them a little bit of cantaloupe. They love cantaloupe. Bread. The bread they go wild for. 
Look who else goes wild for bread. Easy. Sit, Molly. There you go. Ready, Big Titan? Oh, yeah. Chickens love to eat, guys. So anyway, guys, we covered a lot of stuff today on chickens. I love them. I'm going to continue to have them. The pros way outweigh the cons. Oof. The pros outweigh the cons a lot. Come here, you. <laughs> what are you doing? They're friendly. They're nice. They give you eggs. They give you manure. They till areas that you want tilled. And they're all in all pretty good. The cons, yeah, they do get a little noisy when they're younger laying eggs initially. Um, and another con is you don't want them out in your backyard full time because they will totally get rid of any vegetation you have. So you got to have a spot for them or you got to rotate them around so they don't over till your areas. At one point, a couple of years ago, I had all my chickens and I would let them out every day. Before you know it, I had a dirt yard, not a backyard with any kind of grass or vegetation at all. They totally demolished it. So you got to keep that in mind. But besides that, they're pretty cool. Hello. So that's it guys, get your coop ready, get your run going. And you could be having these little girls. What are you looking at? <laughs> They're very curious, they always come up to you. There's one right here, I don't know if you can see it, but. All right, real quick future plans for the coop okay i've had this like i said it's been going over a decade so my future plans is i'm gonna get rid of this fencing this whole area i'm gonna take that back for us i'm gonna ex keep you know the yard going back there i want to plant a bunch of cool like hummingbird and bird insect friendly butterfly friendly plants back there i want to have different bird feeders a little fountain so it's gonna like convert into like a little park area for the birds and everything else so what I want to do is I want to get another one of these runs and I want to put it back there in this section and then I can make a trap door in the coop to go out back there so then they would have that one chain link fenced and this one chain link fence and that would be plenty of room for them guys at one point, I gave them one whole half of this yard all the way back to there. They had all this, and it was all nothing but dirt at the end. So that's my future plan. And also, I need new sunshade for in here because during the Hurricane Ian, a big branch fell. And it ripped my sunshade. But again, this sunshade has been up for 13 years. It lasted a long time, so I'm getting another one of them. But I want to almost duplicate this to over back here, and then they would have really nice secure area. And then this whole part of the yard can be ours again, because that's a big, big chunk of yard right there that we're missing out on. And I really want to start redoing this whole area with my outdoor kitchen. I want to put nice fencing around the banana patch. I want to turn this into the butterfly, bird, park, sanctuary area. A lot to do. A lot to do, guys. I'm excited. All right, guys. On that note, it's time to relax. I'm going to set up the, com the laptop here, get to editing this video. But I hope there was a lot of good information on this video, guys. I encourage you to get your own chickens if you can. If it's okay in your city or town or wherever you're at get your own chickens get your own eggs and have them eat a lot of the stuff you would just dump into the trash they really help out a lot with that just make sure they're not in a big area where you don't want it tilled up because they will do that <laughs> but on that note we're going to call it a day i'm going to drink a beer i'm going to edit the video i've already got all my laundry done so just relax and hopefully the sunshine stays out for a little while. I'll get a little sun. We'll see you guys next weekend. If you have any more questions or anything you want to add to it, please comment below. 
have everyone like, subscribe, share this for people who you think might want to have chickens, all right? And if we need to do another one with some other questions, we can do a question and answer video too. So load them up. Let's do it. We'll talk to you later. I'm getting the flock out of here. I did it again. I used flock twice. <laughs> later.